welcome back in this lecture we will be discussing something called as symmetry adapted linear combinations so let us first try to understand the term what is symmetry adapted linear combinations so linear combinations are linear combinations we know that uh, they are sum of uh, various things linear can be, uh, combinations can be sum of different functions for example if we are talking about let's say a wave function psi i where i can vary so we can have it like this psi 1 plus psi 2 plus psi 3 and so on right and then of course there can be some coefficients around it so this is called as linear combinations and linear combinations can be of different functions in this particular case we'll be discussing linear combinations of atomic orbitals that is the wave function of atomic orbitals or also of uh, something called as internal co coordinates We'll see what that is later, not in today's lecture, but later in this course. Internal coordinates of a molecule. But today we will see what is the linear combination of any given function and what do you mean by symmetry adapted? So symmetry adapted means taken any linear combination such that we know its symmetry and how do we know its symmetry? So we know its symmetry because uh, we will be taking such linear combinations so that it forms basis of a given irreducible representation of a molecule. So what is the advantage uh, if we do that? So if we take, let's say we have a set of atomic orbitals or set of wave functions of atomic orbitals. And if we try to combine those wave functions so that the resultant combinations, there can be different combinations, right? If you have n such orbitals, there can be n number of uh, linear combinations now all such linear combinations each each individual linear combination can form basis of a individual ir representation and in such cases those linear combinations we will know the symmetry so that's why they are called as symmetry adapted linear combinations and they will also be orthonormal to each other right so in short we can say salcs will be orthonormal that's how we will construct them okay so we will choose the orthonormal combinations what is the advantage of this so advantage of choosing orthonormal sets is we will see that they form acceptable solutions to wave functions well we will not see in this course but uh, this is uh, generally accepted that if the wave functions if you, if the combinations are linear or linear combinations are orthonormal they will form acceptable solutions to wave functions and the second uh, is that if we know the symmetry computation of various integrals becomes easy right becomes handy because of uh, various group theory rules can be then implemented on to those integrals like we have seen in the case of direct product that how to compute the integration uh, given that we know the irreducible representations corresponding to which a wave function is forming a basis right so the goal here is to obtain linear combinations which are symmetry adapted and obtain the orthonormal sets we will see how to generate them 
and what are the applications of such SALCs? So let's call them as SALCs. Symmetrically adapted linear combinations. So the applications of SALCs that also we will cover in later in this course are we will see when we are going to uh, construct hybrid orbitals when we will study chemical bonding hybrid orbitals so for example sp3 sp3d2 and so on right so we know what the hybrid orbitals are so while constructing hybrid orbitals salcs come become very handy uh, when we are combining atomic orbitals to give molecular orbitals right in that case also SALCs will become very handy and we will also see SALCs will help us find out what atomic orbitals are to be chosen in the presence of A ligand. So when ligand is coming to form a bond with a central metal atom, what kind of atomic orbitals are to be chosen to make or facilitate this bond? So all these combinations are decided by the symmetry criteria, and uh, we'll see how then SLCs are helpful for all of this. Similarly, when we are analyzing or visualizing vibrations of the molecules in that case also SLCs will be highly useful right so we have seen that uh, now what are SLCs we'll see the linear combinations of different wave functions or internal coordinates of the molecule as the case may be given that they have they have a given symmetry that is they will form the linear combinations will form basis of uh, ir representation such that all the linear combinations are actually orthonormal to each other so now how do you generate uh, such linear combinations to generate SLCs from a set of functions which are wave functions in this case but you can generate SLCs from every, any given function we will use something called as projection operator we will see what a projection operator is in detail. So projection operator helps generate SALCs from a set of functions. So all you need to know set of functions and how to apply projection operator. So you should also have the knowledge of the character table of a given molecule and the matrices also. So projection operator can be of two different types. We can have complete projection operator and if you are saying complete the other one has to be incomplete right so this one actually relies on the full matrix elements of symmetry operations you know how symmetry operations uh, can be written into matrix form so you need to know all the matrix elements of all the symmetry operations and incomplete projection operator actually works with trace simply the traces of above matrices 
representation of symmetry operations. So, what is the difference between complete? Why do we use matrix elements? So, if we do this complete calculation, the calculation is tedious and all, but this gives you complete details of SALCs without any human intervention. That is, uh, you can write a program and do this complete calculation by itself. In, in case of incomplete projection operator, it will give you partial combinations and then you will have to, but the workload is less. But to obtain complete set of SLCs, here human intervention would be required. So for example, if we are talking about functions that are a basis for 1D IR representations, in this particular case, matrix is equal to trace, right? Matrix representation of a given symmetry operation is equal, is same as the trace, right? So in this case, incomplete projection operation is equal to complete projection operation, right? So basically it will give you the same result. But in case of 2D, 3D or higher IR representations, we cannot say this, right? So matrix uh, is not equal to trace and thus we need to explicitly calculate SLCs using complete projection operation or using incomplete also we can do but we'll see how to actually do it. We'll discuss the case uh, with 1D IR representation and 2D and 3D IR representation separately. Let us first see what do we mean by projection operation and uh, let us derive an expression for the same. Okay. So let us assume first that we have an orthonormal set of Li functions. Let's say that the set is something like phi 1 i, phi 2 i, phi 3 i. So i is the index which I am giving here just to show that this is forming basis for ith irreducible representation and Li thus, thus becomes the dimension of uh, that representation, right? So you have Li, phi Li. This is the set of functions and each of this function is orthonormal to each, each other, right? Orthogonal to each other and these individually they are all normalized. So that's why orthonormal, right? So now this set forms a basis of the ith IR representation of a group of order H. Right? Now for any operator in this group as per definition, we can write for any operator R, let's say, so if we operate R onto any given function T phi T i, we can say that what we have is summation over s phi s i and tau r s t i. Okay. So what do I mean by this? Let us see in more details. 
so when I am saying R, let me write that expression again, is operating on phi ti to give me summation over S phi si tau of R S T i. So in this case, R is a L cross L matrix, right? Then uh, phi t i, if I'm writing this in matrix form, then phi t is L cross one matrix. We'll see these matrices, what are these matrices. And if I'm saying that, then these two are matrices, then this whole thing becomes L cross 1 matrix, right? Then summation S phi S i tau r S t i is L cross 1 matrix. Let us see what do I mean by that. So let's say if I write the above equation in terms of matrix representation, I can say that this is A11 a12, a13, going up to all the way, sorry, a1l, and similarly here a21, al1, and if I go like this, this will be all. So this is L cross L matrix. So this is R matrix, right? Now for phi t, so phi t is any general function from that set of orthonormal functions. So that means I can write this matrix as phi 1, phi 2, all the way to phi a. Okay? So this is my phi t i. I can write the I index over here. Okay, so now if I do this multiplication, what do I get? I get the following. So I will get A11, phi 1, plus A12, phi 2. This is L cross 1. I should get L cross 1 on the multiplication. This is not the direct product. This is the regular multiplication, regular matrix multiplication, right? So similarly, if I do, if I keep on doing this, I will get A21, phi 1, A22, phi 2, A2L, phi L, and so on, right? So now you can see that how do, when I write this equation, basically what I'm doing is I'm operating R, any given symmetry operator onto a set of functions. And each of this function then gets transformed into the final form. So this we have done it many times. So I'm just writing it in general form. So for example, when I do a, C3 operation on to X, Y, Z, we have seen uh, what does it mean. So, matrix representation for a C3 operation is, we have seen how to write this, right? Minus half minus root 3 by 2, 0. Uh, this is plus root 3 by 2 minus half 0 0 0 1 and when I apply it on x y z this is my 3 cross 3 matrix this is my 3 cross 1 matrix which is phi t and what I get here is minus half x minus root 3 by 2 y then root 3 by 2 x minus half y and z right and this is my 3 cross 1 matrix so when i say that c3 operated on x it gives me 
minus half x minus root 3 by 2 y plus 0 z right so I can say this that this is my a11 this is my a12 and this is my a13 right so I can say right so this is just to sh uh, show you that we have already done this we are now just writing it in mathematical form you already know now. so now if to the original equation which we had written earlier if we multiply with tau r s prime t prime j and let's say star and taking sum over all r right so now i'm trying to make an expression which is similar to what we have learnt in great orthogonality theorem so that's why i'm multiplying this and taking sum over all r so what do i get so i get a uh, tau r s prime t prime star and i had operator r phi t i and what do i have here and i also take summation r for this right because i say that taking sum over all r so i also do summation over all r here there was another summation s equal to 1 to l and I had phi s i and now I had tau r s prime t prime j star and I had initially tau r s t and that was i okay. okay so this is simple all i have done is i have multiplied this factor with this factor over here this particular factor on both sides and i have taken the summation over all r okay so now uh, if we carefully see that this particular term over here does not include any of this r so it is independent of summation r so it, this can be taken out so i can rewrite this equation as s equal to 1 to l phi s i so now i can just have summation onto these two terms right summation r i'll just write this one first just to because it is familiar in this order S prime T prime uh, J star. Now I know what this is, right? Mm -hmm. This is using a great orthogonality theorem. I can rewrite this again, right? So what what is this? This actually becomes summation S equal to one l phi s i h upon square root of l i l j delta i j delta s s prime delta p t prime right so this is easy to see okay so now let's go to next page so now this whole thing will survive so let me just write this ex complete expression again now so summation over all r tau r conjugate r 
psi t i is equal to summation over all s i s i and h over square root of n i l j delta i j delta s s prime delta t t prime now we have a summation over s where s goes from 1 to l right so that means we can simplify the only uh, simplify the summation so all the values of s where which are not equal to s prime will go to zero so that means only s equal to s prime will survive over, over here so out of this whole summation i can just write the one term one of the terms right so instead of this what i'll write here is phi now my s becomes s prime because that's the only value which will survive rest all the other values of s will go to zero i h over l i l j delta i j and delta t t prime okay. now similarly i can say that i equal to j only those values will, will survive where i will be equal to j all rest of the values will go to zero so then now i can convert all of this into j so now this is summation over all r tau r s prime t prime j star r phi t j because my i is equal to j now and i can say phi s prime j h over or you can write in terms of i also lj we need to convert i equal to j only on the right hand side left hand side is still the same right because that is still i let us keep that i because the delta is only on the left hand side right hand side sorry so then i can say that this is my lj and what else I've got here? So delta T T prime. Right. Let us now write the expression. Put take everything else on this side. So now what I do is L J. Write the operation expression for the projection operator. So if I do take all of this on this side, L J over H summation over all r tau r s prime t prime j star operator r phi t i gives you phi s prime j delta t equal to delta t t prime okay now this whole expression is called as projection operator see what what this operator is doing it is operating on to a function which is the basis of ith representation and it's actually giving you a function which is the basis for jth representation here right so what i can say here is so i can write this as operator p short form for projection operator and i can say that this is my j j index and s prime t prime operated on phi t i gives me phi s j right when i say i equal to i phi s prime j 
and delta dt prime right again see if i say if uh, i need to equate this to dt prime t equal to t prime so that the right hand side does not go to zero so for t equal to t prime i can now write the projection operator as s prime t prime j phi t prime i is equal to phi s prime j right so this is my projection operator so the formula how to calculate the projection comes from here but this is the complete def uh, combining this becomes the complete definition so we will see an example we will see an illustrative example but uh, i hope this uh, derivation part is clear and now there is some sense of how to derive the projection operator but now various elements in this are this is the dimension of the representation then this is the order of the group summation over all are this is the corresponding matrix element which we are going to use so different matrix elements have to be used at a given amount point of time and now because uh, here we are using different matrix elements that would mean that we need the complete matrix details of all the symmetry operations so also understand that here the summation needs to be done over all r and not just uh, the uh, different classes because symmetry operations of different classes will be having different matrices right so summation this is very very important so summation needs to be done over all r and not just over classes okay uh, that is because matrix elements because we are using matrix elements in this so matrix elements in different symmetry operations are unique right the matrix elements are not common so that's why we need to carry out the complete uh, summation over all r so i think that is all for this lecture so please go through it in more details and see if you have any difficulty understanding the derivation part and we will do a lot of examples so that it becomes very very clear how to use projection operator in different problems uh, so we will be uh, taking different examples and we'll be trying out trying to obtain different uh, linear combinations which are symmetry adapted so we'll try to calculate the slcs using different combinations so, so that this is very very clear i think that is all for today so we'll discuss uh, some examples in the next class